We out here. We're we out here, headed to Kill Tony Mania in Sacramento and San Swagamento. Francisco. Swagamento. Swagamento. That's David Lucas's voice that you are hearing. He's right here, and yeah. we also have Ryan J. E. Belt. And you want to pop in frame? You gonna draw this? <laughs> yeah. Are you drawing this one? I might try. Ryan, say what's up uh, on David's on David's mic. What's up, everybody? <laughs> yeah. Wow. That motherfucker got so much swag with that ponytail. Heck yeah. Uh, behind <laughs> Ryan J. E. Belt, we have Brian Redband. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey, Brian. Uh, and then uh, to his right, uh, we have his girlfriend, Janice. Hello, Janice. Good old bra eyes. Oh, she has her, her sleeping mask on, which Tony's... Tony said earlier, sure what, what, what did you think it was earlier, Tony? I thought it was one of those Asian cough masks. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is it always Asian? Nah, they're the only people that wear though. I go on no like, stereotypes no and knows. stuff. Hey, there's some bison on the right. No. Speaking of stereotypes, Asians uh, know a lot about those. They look like a cow red, man. <laughs> Exactly. 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 <laughs> oh my goodness. That's the perfect start to this thing. And then um, behind uh, Janice is Joel Jimenez. What's up, Joel? What's up? What's up? Hello. Hello. Hey, hey. Uh, and then to his left, we have the one, the only in the middle, William Montgomery. Hey. Hello. Hey, William. How are you, buddy? <laughs> Good. How are y'all? <laughs> Doing well, man. He bought one pair of boxers for five days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got he got but, all his but, shit in a Ziploc bag. But, but somehow he brought seven pairs of Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to his left is Chroma Chris Dillon. What's up, Hello. Chroma Chris? Hello. Hey, and we have a full... This is a... Uh, this is a, what do, what do they call this? A Mercedes Sprinter van? We're in a Sprinter. Should we give them a tour? Give them a little tour. We're in some rap shit. So uh, this is like a, kind of a, if you guys want to kind of pass the camera around to the yeah, back. Let me show. Yeah, right? We got to uh, show on the TV This is like an Xbox. interactive, yeah. You see that? TV, Xbox. It's, it's called a Mercedes Tenet Sprinter Windows. van, I believe. And uh, this is a, uh, this is actually a very comfortable van. The way, uh. Yeah, Brian's giving a little tour with the with oh, the camera hello. back there. Hey guys. <laughs> this is quite the 3D experience. Um, but yeah, we started uh, started driving at 10 a.m. this morning on the way to uh, to Sacramento, and we have everybody there, and we're excited to do six shows this weekend. Which is, is that Mark Norman up there? Which is uh, unprecedented. <laughs> six shows. Oh, we got we got six shows. I don't know. Hey, hey, what's going on? Hey, how are you? Hey. All right. I think somebody might have hit the uh, stop record during the past little around, but I turned it back on. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Good grief. Ooh, crisis. Oh, handy hey. ass red, man. Mm hmm. Uh, it, it's kind of funny when uh, Tony, last year, when you said that we were doing two Kill Tonys, uh, I was like, that's crazy. We're doing two Kill Tonys in, in San Francisco? I was just thinking about that. Isn't it absolutely nuts how, like, routine this has gotten since then? The big event, it became mania because we were doing two in a night for the first time. <laughs> now we're doing two in a night twice at the same place and two before that in Sacramento. Yeah, it's pretty insane. Six shows total. And uh, I just love that. The, I, I love the fact that we're all driving in one van up there because last year what we did we uh we had a little bit of a different kind of setup for uh the van that we drove in and it how many people was in there 10 or 11 there's 14 people in that van there was more people and less cargo space so i made a slight adjustment this year the cargo space was very necessary this year since we're hauling the drums and the guitar and like an amp and all the luggage and six shows you know, six different characters. So uh, the the packing was was a little uh, a little bit more intense than usual. How's uh, how's the back row doing back there, huh? Uh, you know, uh, great. 
you should uh, you should show the people watching like what the view looks like. We're driving through real California. Yeah, like, it's show awesome. them some of that. Driving through real desert canyons. Uh, amber okay. waves of grain. <laughs> this is so right now. Mountain majesty. I don't want to be over here during the fucking rainstorm. Not, not really the best view right now. Nah. It's a little. It's you an gotta idea. wait till you get like during, Do we pass through Big Sur? Uh, yeah. no, that's uh. Gotta that, go that's like left. way, way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like way farther uh, north, I believe. Big Sur. Uh, we got. This might be one of the first times uh, on camera that we've had everybody literally in the same exact space that ha you know that that has something to do with Kill Tony. It's literally all the working parts yeah. of the show. Kind of crazy. If, if anything happened to us on this trip, it would be uh, fuck. Yeah, that'd be the end of the show. <laughs> a lot of good memes, though, I bet. I bet there'd be a lot of cool photoshops. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, kill yeah. everybody. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. T Tony killed everyone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kill Tony. Oh, fuck. That's a crazy thought that our death, the, the best thing that would come out of it is a lot of good memes. <laughs> hey. It's a sign of the times. We're in that internet age, you know right. what I'm saying? Internet ain't shit. <laughs> I want to be buried inside of a meme. <laughs> Man, this is eat up. We're going through the grapevine. We are going through the grapevine. So this is the uh, the twisty. Did we sing? I mean, we we always can sing. Yeah. We're we're about what forty five minutes away from the poop part. That's my favorite part. From the what? What's the poop? Oh, oh the what? smell. <laughs> yeah. You drive oh, yeah. through uh, about 30 minutes of, of uh, bison. Uh, that, uh, <laughs> it ain't no bison out here. What are you talking about? <laughs> They're bison. Just just went bison. Do you know where bison do exist, David? Just out of curiosity? <laughs> Probably in Nebraska. You're pretty close. In the Midwest. Uh, yeah. It ain't, it ain't. It's actually directly between Salt Lake City <laughs> and uh, fucking, um, where was it? Uh, I don't know. Where it, was that? I know where it is, but I have no idea. Oh, Boise? Something like that. This, Wherever this we joke. went this some joke. after Salt Lake City. Yeah, I once saw a bison, and then, and then I saw some cows, and then I saw more bison, and then I saw what appeared to be bison again, but were cows. And I go, it's crazy that I'm seeing bison out here. And they looked and saw cows and they're like, oh, it's cows. I said, that's a brown cow, bro. Y'all know what Neil guy are? That's a new, version. Well, a new are? version of the story. Neil guy. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Neil guy? Yeah, they're like they're like a, a deer, like, let me find a picture. They, they're like uh, rampant in Texas. Neil guy. Have you heard of him, Brian? I read a lot. Chroma Chris, have you heard of them? Yeah. Neil guy? Neil guy? The smartest person in this van times a thousand is Ryan J. Ebelt. So let's check in with Ryan J. and see if he's heard about this animal. Uh, David. I got a picture of it. No, I definitely have not. Okay. They, they're they imported from somewhere and they got them all in Texas. Neil guy. They look like bison mixed with Did you with find deer. it? Huh. Mixed with a little bit of goat. Oh, weird! Those, they big as hell, huh? Look at this thing. <laughs> you're just yeah, you're just showing Jeremiah new stuff he can barbecue. I've never. <laughs> I'll put that in a slow cooker right there. Wow! Makes See, I know I know I know that. some stuff besides <laughs> roast jokes. <laughs> I know you know about animals that none of us know about. We were playing. It was. I'm a hunter, man. I hunt. You know. uh, by the way, I started, this is how I started the morning for this trip. Uh, I I guess I put a bottle of water in my uh, cargo shorts without the cap on. Never done that in my life. Uh, got into the van. Just poured everywhere all over the side of my cargo shorts. I'm sitting in wet shorts right now. And uh, it's maybe the happiest I've made Tony in a long time. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea I was going to start the morning with the hardest laugh that I possibly can have. I haven't laughed that hard since uh, the real last podcast when our friend told us that she wants to bang Tim Dillon. Oh, dude, that was so yeah, a fun funny fact about that. A fun fact about that is 
I truly, at one point, almost passed out, and at another point, almost puked. I felt like both things were going to happen. Because, yeah. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a pretty fun, pretty fun moment. Chroma Chris, we don't get to hear from you uh, that often, um, so I just wanted to say hey and uh, and and check hey, in with you, pal. Say uh, I'm excited that you're uh, coming on the road with us this weekend. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad I uh, I get to come. I was able to uh, clear my whole schedule, and I was uh, I made sure to let you guys know several times. I was like, "Hey, I'm clear. I'm open, guys." <laughs> <laughs> we messaged Chris. Um, we messaged Chris multiple times. Like, can you come? And he's like, "Yeah." And then we would message him again. Like, "Are you sure?" Yeah, I was and he's like, like yes. "Guys, I cleared it." <laughs> You're like, "Are you sure? Maybe you can't come for maybe just two of them." <laughs> <laughs> oh man got a lot of surprises in store for uh now we're going right for the kill tony mania <laughs> do, you, do you know what west and east or do you just say right in the left? <laughs> <laughs> yeah now we're going down on the map <laughs> uh brian red band hello what's you going are... on nothing nothing enjoying david's uh smoke smell Oh, what flavor is it? The Aussie bowl? Acai. Acai. Oh, I that's like one of the- bison? Huh? Yes. Yeah, I've had bison, bison burgers. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's really good. You had an Arby's, Janice? Yeah, Arby's. Arby's, Arby's had a limited edition bison uh, sandwich, and it was actually even, really good. I don't even know how Arby's still exists, man. <laughs> what do you mean? I, I, People hate on Arby's. I, I, I like it. Arby's. You don't like Arby's, David? Hell no. I'll eat the french fry. The curly fries? Yeah. The curly fries are good. Have you, a, uh, have you happened to have a uh, beef and cheddar with the onion bun? Oh, no, that's so yeah, good. Yeah, that's the uh, beef. Well, I'm a, pe- I'm a every- pescatarian now, so I definitely. Oh, have- yeah. You, you know, uh, we were talking about this before you came, Tony. We were. We, I had uh, in and out again yesterday. You know, that has to be the most overrated sandwich. Their fries is garbage, bro. Their, their okay. fries are one of the worst Whoa, fries ever. Look at the license plate on the car in front of us. It's pod. What are the odds of that? Or a whole podcast crew, and the license plate says "pod." Whoa! That can't be a real license plate. That car does does look like when a spaceship breaks off from the rest of the rocket. That's like an illegal license plate. (laughs) (laughs) Wow! That that should look like a car. Jeremiah, Chris said that's the band POD. (laughs) 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 Chroma Chris batting Batting a thousand. (laughs) Well, Tony, I uh, it was the band POD. That's so funny. Dude, Jeremiah, what if we Jeremiah, drove by what? and it was the lead singer of P.O.D.? Here in the summer, I Jeremiah, what's your so five alive. favorite uh, fast food burgers? My five and favorite fast food burgers? Ranked in a row, like number Ooh. one through five. Okay. Um, can be from any state, correct? Any state, but more, more like nas- nationwide more for the most part. Na- national chains. Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. In and out is in my top five. Is it is? Yeah. Whataburger is in my top five. Yeah, Me Whataburger. Too. Whataburger. Uh, trying to think of um, other chains. BK. That... <sighs> BK is garbage. I would I wouldn't put them in my burger top five. Definitely not in my in my. I mean, who's in it? You got Shake Shack. You got In and Out. Oh, you yeah, got uh, what's the other burger five place? Guys. Five Guys. Five Guys. Y'all ever had Cookout? No. Yeah. That, yeah. Back yeah backyard burger yeah. whatever. Yeah. But they got them in the south, real heavy. I would say, number one Shake Shack. I would me. put Shake Shack in there for sure. And, and Five Guys. Yeah, Shake Shack yeah. is up there. Five Guys, Shake Shack. She said Wendy's. Wendy's ain't bad. Wendy's yeah, like is Wendy's. pretty good. Certain certain bacon. Uh, they've got some good bacon there. Like Chris what, on their on their burgers. Uh, Carl's Jr. into the mix. Ugh, garbage. No, not for not. If we're talking breakfast, <laughs> they have the best biscuits and gravy. Oh my! Better than goodness. Whataburgers. Ah, uh, Whataburgers is pretty fucking good. Yeah, their their biscuits and gravy is really and shake good. Burger? Frisco oh, nuts are oh, good, good but that's about Steak it. Steak and shake is Steak and shake's pretty good. Have you ever had the habit? The habit's one of my favorites. Yeah, habit's no. good. Uh, yeah, I mean that, that probably consists of like the top five like burgers uh, that, that are that are to go. Checkers, 
I've never uh, been to Checkers. Is that considered fast food? You Hell think? yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Bro, they don't even have nowhere you can sit down. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, what about you? I mean, I'm an in and out guy. I think if you like the actual flavor of beef and not just a bunch of uh, different things, then in and out is the undefeated number one. I think if I'm in the mood for a lot of flavor, like a lot of, you know, jalapenos and cheese and other shit, then Steak Shack or wait. Is that it? Shake. 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 Wait, what is it? Shake Shack. Shake Shack. Shake Shack. Yeah, because they have all the like the chopped peppers and whatever. But I mean, as far as a regular burger, I just don't see anything beating uh, in and out. I like the flavor of beef. I don't understand so. that. I, it's cheap. I would like to do a blindfold taste test with all the of in-and-out us. The In-N-Out Burger ain't bad. It's not bad. It's I'm the just saying fries it, that well, suck. The fries suck too, but. You yeah. just have to get cheese on them. You just have to get cheese on them. I don't know what they make them shits out of. It just tastes well, like they're, starch. they're fresh potatoes. Yeah, but... They man, do it right in front of everybody. I don't know, man. It's the reason good. why you guys don't like it is because it's fresh and natural. You guys like fucking preservatives and butter. Anyway. I, I might put McDonald's we'll in put my butter top five. On fries, Tony. I think I'll put McDonald's in my top five. Quarter, for, pa- quarter pounder ain't bad. For, for a Big Mac... Or a quarter pounder. The conversation's over. <laughs> it's over now. You just ruined it. I don't know. It's not a real I burger. I think we have Dude, to. Dude, it's fast food. It doesn't have to be. What'd you say, Janice? I think we should do a face off. What'd you yeah. say? A like, face off? Like blind, blind oh, taste a blind test. Blind taste test? 10 burgers. The problem with, with McDonald's, though, yeah. is such a specific taste. I feel like right. you would know right, right. away yeah. which one's McDonald's. You eat enough McDonald's, you'll be doing blind taste tests for the rest of your life. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, then let's uh, then let's talk. Uh, well, there's I guess there's not. I'm we should stop th- and get some fruit. Get some fruit. Yeah, they're selling purple over here on the side shit. of the road. <laughs> <laughs> David, David, before the podcast started, he said the, the black people don't call it grape; they call it purple. So. They do. We get some of that purple drink. Uh huh. Exactly. So Joel was uh, gracefully calling back. Yeah, that's what they let me get that red drink. That red Not fruit punch. Yeah, red, red. <laughs> Green is not like a super popular color that ever. Uh, took off like for fruit i see echo cooler was pretty sweet back then. other than mountain dew but that's not really fruit jolly Jolly ranchers green's a good one yeah it ain't no green drink outside yeah that's not a green drink yeah they tried to do shrek ketchup and they when that movie came out and there was green ketchup and it didn't sell because it freaked too many people out that sounds stupid ecto cooler yeah ecto cooler what's ecto cooler ecto cooler is a drink by high c from the ghostbusters days and uh it was the best, man. It was the greatest drink, like ever. It's pretty yeah. good. It had the green monster on it. Yes, yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Adam Ray. <laughs> oh, man. How was the remake of Ghostbusters? Billy Bonell. Bo- <laughs> 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 the reference that Brian Redband has dropped in literally, I want to say, oh, yeah. thirty episodes of Kill Tony sprinkled out the years. He's like, you look like Billy Bonell, and no, and like. <laughs> Like he's our buddy and he's a super funny LA comic, but like for somebody in rain in a random state, like And it, then there's Mexican Billy Bo now. <laughs> Even Billy Bonell doesn't get the joke. <laughs> yeah, because his name is Billy Bonell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey Joel. Yeah. What's William doing? Oh, he's back here playing one of those fucking like clash of clans games or something like that hey. and then as soon as you asked that he opened yeah, up his notebook now he's writing <laughs> oh my <laughs> hey hey what, c- hey could i talk to william montgomery yeah, for a second seriously i'm not talking a lot i uh i have the measles and the bumps oh no a gash a rash and purple bumps <laughs> my mouth is wet my throat is dry i'm going blind in my right eye my tonsils are as big as rocks. I've counted 16 chicken pox. And there's one more that 17. And don't you think my face looks green? Wait a minute. Are you reading Shell Silverstein? Yeah. This is Shell Silverstein. <laughs> yeah. He's reading Shell Silverstein. Silverstein guy. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> I thought it was from Dr. Seuss. Dr. Shell. Seuss gets the flu. <laughs> what is this is like no man's land out here. I ain't seen a restaurant in 20 minutes. Yeah, this is uh John Denver was full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> It's so flat around here. It's crazy. Well, I'll, uh, oh, get a little tour of. I mean, who would have thought that parts of California are like this? Exactly. So right? stop moving here. All right. Did somebody fire back here? Yeah, it was William. Definitely. Yeah, we may be coming up on the cows. The bison. Yeah, there or you go. Or William farted while reciting Shell Silver. God damn it. Can we open a Can we open a window for no. like a second? No, just have David blow some vape vape yeah, clouds back there. Will you there. blow vape juice this way, please? <laughs> Jesus, that's that's Christ. the new air freshener for farts. Is just vape. Oh no, the flavor he's smoking is William's farts. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, it's increasing. <laughs> What's going on I'm back glad there? I smell that shit. That was no an accident, farting. man. Yo, that smells like purple fart back there, guys. <laughs> he had to stand up. Man, I, I can, that one. It, it was the either you, you farted, ag- either you farted again or it like got worse. I know it's. <laughs> it's that bad because he probably don't have no underwear. It's like yellow. It smells like yellow. <laughs> William, you back there bare booty farting. <laughs> hey, uh, your shorts is moist. Janice, I need your Asian face mask. I, I don't know how William made my shorts wetter when he farted. <laughs> I don't know how that's possible. Next to William, they said it'll be fine. Dude. Hey, uh, Joel, have you learned anything about William on this trip? Because uh, uh, I think it'd be good to get to know William. <laughs> A little bit um, more. No, not a damn thing. I I did find out that he really is getting. He really did get kicked out of his house. Okay, William, can we do two truths and a lie with you? You have to tell one truth though. My hair's red. Two uh-huh. lies and a truth. No, I think it should be two truths and a lie. So how does this work? Okay, well, so I just got a whiff of that shit. Like, what's truth? <laughs> yeah, 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 what yeah. is truth? Dude, it's the it's the stuff outside, dude. You gotta you gotta chill out. It's literally outside. It's gonna be Joel. Oh, here we go. Joel, it's it's gonna be way worse if we crack the window right now. Why y'all keep saying bison? Because it's a running thing without. Oh, I'm like, who the fuck herds bison? Yeah. There's a bunch of them over there. That'll probably be a superfood. It's a ton of bison. Yeah. Look at all that. Look bison. at all those blatant bison over there. And they got Dude. Them, them bison got solar panels. Man, they got spots on those bison. <laughs> they got 101 Dalmatian bison. Cows are I ugly. Love, I, I, I think they're adorable. That I black and white shit don't do it. It's like a... Yeah. Nah, that's that outside. No, it's, it's definitely outside. What is that? Sh- that sulfur yeah. smell? Try to talk into the mic, guys. If, if too you, much nitrogen. If, if you're uh, back there with it. Uh, oh, that's not even the bad so one. Two truths and a lie. So two truths and a lie with William Montgomery. Let's try to let's try to get this off. So so William, you have to tell two truths and one lie, and then we have to figure out which one is real and which one, uh, which two are real and which one is the lie. Okay. Okay. I have red hair. I'm on Kill Tony, and I killed a man. <laughs> <laughs> William, you ready? Uh, yes. Okay. Stand up a little bit. Um. <laughs> uh, I thought that guy's so cool. Try to make a You should try to make a truck hong for old time's sake. Oh, Monster Energy Drink tour style, 2017, my friend. Yeah. That's it. That's cotton, bro. I'm black, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to touch that. <laughs> William, you ready? Uh, yes. Okay. Two truths and a lie. We don't know the order and arrangement. We have to guess. Go okay. whenever you're ready. 
uh, growing up, I had a three-legged dog named Binky who uh, uh, got let of, out of our backyard by my cousin Taylor. Uh, I saw Binky got hit. Um, a friend of my father saved him. He ended up making it probably five years after that. Um, that's one. Another one is um, there was a, a, a black lady who used to clean my parents' house. She had fake teeth. We couldn't find her fake teeth one day. Um, we're looking all around. My middle brother Vance is in his crib. He's a little boy. He smiles and it's like this go gold tooth smile. The fake teeth were in Vance's mouth. Um, uh, <laughs> okay, what's the other one? Um, and remember, it's two truths and one lie. I was truly lying. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> what's another one? Um, uh, probably so this one, year. this one would be the truth, William. This yes. Is, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, growing up, it was hard for me to learn how to read. I had to go to something called transition in between kindergarten and first grade. I remember during one of the show and tells, I brought a, uh, it was like a, a camel toy or no, it was a lamb toy. And I got up in front of the class of 10 kids and one of the kids and sitting watching me said, Mary had a little lamb and all of the kids started laughing at me. And I was just standing up in front of everybody, just wondering why Miss Henderson wasn't stopping what was going on. It was it honestly, it was nightmarish. That's it was, the most honest thing I've ever heard from William. Yeah. The, it was horrible. It left an impression on me. That's like his origin story right it there. Is, why it really why he became a comedian. Yeah, no, it really was hard. It left an impression. No, okay, me. so I'm going to go out on a limb here, William, and say that the black lady <laughs> <laughs> that used to nanny for you guys who had missing teeth, your, you looked in the crib and saw that your brother was wearing her teeth <laughs> is not true. That was true. No, Imogene, she was saying, I say, that was true. That was true. Uh, that's okay. Hilarious. Okay. So we have one truth. Uh, the Mary had a little lamb. That's definitely true. Yes. Yes. And then the, the, what was the other one? What was the first one? Dog. The three legged. You didn't have a three legged dog. No, that was also true. Wait, how did the thing work? I was supposed to do one. You, you wait. You did. You told three truths. <laughs> it was three truths. Wow. Three truths. No lies. Yes. Norma yes. Jean is a real person. Yes. Yeah. That, really? Yes, that's a true Congrats. story. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Turning this on his head. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that's, dude, that's amazing. Th those, dude, that story is so funny. <laughs> that's real. Have you yeah, ever told yeah, that story on stage about the teeth? I never have. You should, man. That's hilarious. It's so good. It's so good. I should. Well, you yeah. Six minutes. Six minutes. Yeah, maybe I'll say it tonight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Feel free to do that. I will. That'll work. Cool. Perfect. That will work. <laughs> Kill Tony gets you so much material. Yeah. Because you got to do so much new stuff. Yeah. Once so you get in the routine of writing or having to force yourself to try a minute a week, it teaches you a, uh, a lot about what you're capable of. Discipline. Hell yeah. That's, I have an hour in no time. That's 52 uh, minutes it's, a year. Yeah. Well, Not to mention the these extra shows, yeah. like six, so that's an hour. Six this week. And then other ones, so. Yeah, the La Jolla, four La Jolla's in a year. You got it. Huh. Are we going to... Are, are we going to... Are we going to go... Uh, are we going to start doing La Jolla quarterly? Yep, we're trying to. I think next one's in uh, March, it looks like. Whole big, crazy weekend in March. La Jolla. 
it's gonna be a blast. What's uh what's the legal uh rules about seatbelts in a van like this? Uh I don't know. I don't know if you for that far back if you need to or not. I wanna fly from the back to the front windshield. <laughs> Um, Tracy Morgan style. Oh wow! <laughs> if it's Tracy, Mor- <laughs> if it's Tracy Morgan style, I want that because that was a big check. I'm cool on that. That motherfucker ain't gonna never be right. Uh, I want to get into this next segment: fanning out, fanning out questions from fans. I reached out to people online, and uh, they've got some questions for uh, for the cast to kill Tony. Uh, the first question uh, comes from Organic Sound on Reddit. Uh, question for Red Band: Are you Cracker Barrel Kid Fifty <laughs> Five? <laughs> no. Okay, William, response to that. By the way, if we're going to get hit, we should do it right now. This is an Amazon truck, guys. You want to fucking do this shit? Wants to get rich right now. Tony just yells, Jeff Bezos, and plows into a... I am honestly a little worried. There I is some guy... Turbo was driving, too. I've never seen that. There is a guy who's from San Francisco who sends me uh, messages. I don't think I have them. I think I, I delete them. But I think he's going to be there. I'm a little nervous that he's going to come come get me when we're in San Francisco. Yeah. We'll see. Um, is there a real Cracker Barrel 55? Is that like a real? Somebody made it. Somebody made Somebody it. Somebody made it, I think, after William It's probably started. the same yeah. guy that does uh, the other guy, right? The, the Asian one. T- Tony yeah, Tony Chin. Chin. Could be. I don't know. I don't know. I spawned a number of monsters after talking about that, though. Um, this one comes from uh, Freaky Fast Harvick on uh, on Reddit. Uh, this says, um, question for everyone. Do you have a specific routine to get ready before the shows? I always make sure I go pee. I check my... Uh pieces of papers that have the dates, the upcoming tour dates, and what ads we have to do. And uh, I just make sure that the guest is extra comfortable and they know that the outlay of the show, I always tell the guests the same thing, which is we don't interrupt the 60 seconds and uh, don't feel pressured to say too much, have fun. Don't take shots at the band because they're beloved on the show. It'd just be a bad move. And uh, you don't have to be nice and you don't have to be mean, you know, just hit home runs. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah. Uh, David, you have a, uh, a routine that you do b- before you hit the stage. Uh, you being our newest regular on the show, it's probably just more in general for stand up rather than or maybe maybe it is something that you do specifically right before kill tony i do like a little mild meditation or i just recite some shit in my head okay yeah and then i just go out there and do my thing uh i kind of want to hear uh you want to pass the mic to ryan j ebel i, I kind of want to hear his prep before the show because i feel like that's very interesting uh you're, you're our house artist for the show and uh uh a lot of people may not have heard your voice that much uh, right. because we just see your amazing art every episode. So what's your process before going uh, and setting up for, for Kill Tony and stuff like that? Well, I usually have to look up who the guests are and I have a long running file of reference photos of everybody on the show because frequently, and I, I now when I first started, I used to wing it a lot more. I, I would look up who was going to be on the show so I'd have an idea of what they'd look like. And since I was usually only doing Tony, Red Band, and then the two guests, you know, sometimes I just totally wing it. Uh, but once we kept adding people and I started trying to incorporate the band and try to get the regulars in when I could, or, you know, if somebody popped in, like, you know, Doug Benson stopped by the show or Ron White or whoever, um, you know, it got to be so many people that it's like now I kind of have to block something in. I have to have kind of a rough idea, like, like at least space out seven or eight heads, depending on who's going to be on the show. Yeah. And um, 
yeah and then I, I you know i try to flow with it you know depending on like, like a lot of times it's like i use the band is like you know because they when you guys bring in the various costumes it almost lends a sort of theme an overall theme to the show so it's like that's why i, I sometimes i build stuff around that and uh or you know specific things that any of the comics bring up or that comes up during the interview or anything like that that, that i can try to incorporate to personalize it to that show um yeah, and then a lot of it's just trying to pick out what what I want to do it in, you know. Like, how, how often are you like halfway through the show and you're like, oh, I I may not finish this, like, or or you start like kind of like, there's a little bit of panic that sets in, like, oh, I need to hurry up on aspects. Oh, oh very frequently. Uh, <laughs> although usually it's not halfway because a lot of times I'm sort of like I I have an ear on the show. Uh, usually when freak out time occurs is whenever I hear. Well, we have a regular on this show. Oh, yeah. That's usually that's what like, I know because it's like, all right, we're going to do the regulars and we might do one or two more. And I'm, and that's when I'm looking down going, oh, God, I've just got to start throwing stuff on here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, Brian, do you have a prep that you... I mean, just hook everything up. <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't really have time for prep. Usually when I'm done hooking stuff up, I go in the back and chill with everyone. Usually you'll ask Joel uh, or myself for uh, the song that we're going to come out for the intro. Yeah. And we either have to send that to you or Joel will send you like a Spotify link. Yeah. Uh, the bad part about my thing is when we go on these road trips, I have like different stuff I bring than I do on the Monday shows. And there's so many little adapters and cables and cords and it's it's about 30 different things I have to plug in or have and then it's different from the road show. So it's it's kind of stressful because like when I especially when we come back from a week, I'm like, shit, did I bring all the extra stuff that I need for the comedy store show that I didn't bring on the road? And a lot of times it's like one little adapter can fuck me up. So now I have like two of everything and yeah. three of everything. Do you everything try to keep and, things like separate that yeah. way? So it's, yeah, because yeah, I, I can imagine night would be super stressful. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Apple, for having me have so many fucking adapters. Oh, dude, it's crazy. I mean, just the money that they've made off of adapters is insane. Uh, this is how far we are. Uh uh, 263 miles from Sacramento is where we are headed right now. Just to give you guys an update. Um, Joel, what's your prep before the show? Because uh, um, I, 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 you're kind of running around sometimes uh, before the uh, the show, Joel. Yeah, yeah. When you ask pre-show rituals, Chris said that mine is panic. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's kind of true. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I I get there, I set up my drums, um, and then yeah, I don't I don't love being trapped in that back room for too long. So I like to get out and like move around and get air and stuff. But uh, also just us getting into costume is part of a pre-show ritual now at this point. Uh, yeah, that's it. I like what like right before we go out, you know, we'll all pound fists and like try to. Try to, we always say laugh, let's have fun and yeah we always uh, kind of look at each other we either say let's have fun or uh, uh we'll kind of pat each other on back kind of like a like a an improv thing or like i got your back like let's have fun let's uh let's try to make each other laugh we say that a lot backstage yeah. um chris uh you and i uh, are always prepping music like crazy up until the last minute yeah. before every single episode um we'll usually start planning ahead like mid-week i'll start trying to like mid-week i'll start trying to think of songs that kind of fit in with our costumes yeah um, yeah we'll just start coming up with what songs we're going to start playing and then uh me and you will get together beforehand and uh just start laying them down and figuring them out yeah, Chris usually will have a, a general idea of the key he's going to be playing in, and then I'll listen to it a couple times, just kind of find it really quick, and then we'll literally start jotting down the notes like uh, or the chords uh, for Chris on uh, on sheets of paper. So that's why uh, on the Kill Tony on Mondays we have, have that music stand as I'm literally sight reading from what we just uh, uh, were listening to backstage and rehearsing. What's that? Tony, is that a pizza? Yeah. Oh, William just uh, piped up out of nowhere asking for that weed pen. 
Wow. <laughs> There's sheep. Uh, uh, cool. That's a good question. Um, this uh, this one comes from. <laughs> this is kind of funny. This is from Z Ribbit on Reddit. Questions for everyone. What is the grossest shit you personally witnessed Red Band do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start with uh, Tony Hinchcliffe on this one. Well, I mean, this is a real, there's so many things that float to the front of my brain on this. Uh, I mean, personally, the grossest thing to me, uh, probably really just, you know, really just like, watching him eat's a pretty big one <laughs> um, but no uh the time that he far kept farting in the car like that's just the there's nothing worse than to think about his innards like the air <laughs> trapped in his gastrous stomach uh leaking out of where the poop comes out like i mean there's just i can't imagine anything worse than that so yeah that's him farting is actual farting is the grossest thing you think i you think I hate the fart soundboard? You should see me when he actually lets actual air float out of his ass. I mean, farts are naturally gross, but I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen, I don't know if you've ever seen Red Band's thigh gap, but it doesn't exist. Uh, that's just cooking up a good fart. Brian, do you have a rebuttal? Tony just went pretty hard on uh on a new party i want red Band to answer this question <laughs> answer okay red Band, what's the grossest thing you've witnessed yourself do <laughs> while maybe being around us because uh, i can I, I, would, I would say uh sleeping at that hotel at that uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> dude the one that you in philly, you agree, in philadelphia yeah. <laughs> That was the absolute worst. It's actually how Tom Hanks got AIDS in the movie <laughs> Philadelphia. Was that hotel room? <laughs> People almost got fired for that one. People almost got fired. Yeah, that was that was that was probably the worst hotel I've ever stayed at in my life. Me too. <laughs> Absolutely. That was a huge fuck up. Uh, the grossest thing that I've ever done. We'll get back to the red band here in a second. The grossest thing I've ever done was uh, so Michael Bisping needed to uh, use the restroom and we oh, never want oh. the guests to see us before we go out because we're in the, the main room green room, uh, which is uh, uh, the main room green room bathroom. Uh, so he needed to come use the restroom. So we all hid in the shower while Michael Bisping went in to, to pee. And as soon as we closed the shower door, I farted on Joel and Chris. <laughs> like, in closed quarters. And I Bisping heard it, too. He said something. Like, Bisping's like, oi, oh, oh, is that how you treat your friends? <laughs> something like that. What a funny guy. What a funny guy. For as many pun extremely hard, especially for... When you factor in, he's been getting punched in the head forever. What a cool, funny guy. You didn't Mike Bisping up there, honorable mention for a uh, first time guest of 2019. You didn't have to hide in the shower. You could have just stood on his left. Oh, my uh, goodness. Uh, <laughs> uh, Joel, Joel got so mad at me when I farted in the shower. He was like, he's a, what did you say, Joel? I don't remember, dude. I just remember. I, I hate. I hate when people fart for the most part. I, I've become kind of immune to yours, like in a hotel room situation. <laughs> well, like it just becomes part of like the air we have. But like, <laughs> but if it's like in a closed space, I get bumped. You, you're maybe one of the only farts in the like world I could tolerate like that. No, you know what? Let me, let me, let me re-answer the red band question again. Uh, I just remembered. <laughs> When we had food poisoning coming from <laughs> uh, yes, that's the ultimate one. Yeah. <laughs> it's truly the ultimate one. Yeah, we I would have all, to agree with we that. We were all absolutely as sick as we possibly could be. I've never been that sick. I don't think any of us have ever been that sick before. And uh, Red Band threw up in a Ziploc bag. I remember <laughs> handing everybody Ziploc bags, thinking because we didn't want we didn't want the airline to find out how sick we were because they, we knew they wouldn't let us fly. So we had to like low key, like vomit and sweat 
<laughs> anyway, so Red Band that filled, was the filled worst, up a dude. plastic bag <laughs> while sitting next to somebody. I had to like hide it in my armpit. Yeah, and I bet you're <laughs> real sneaky about yeah, it. He had to fucking GQ vomit just into a. <laughs> They get off, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that was the only thing that saved no, me is that I we drank, so, I drank some of that G2 or whatever that Gatorade yeah. stuff was. So the whole British it just smelled like bullshit. It just smelled like purple everywhere. It was called like Lictazade or something like that. Yeah, Lictazade. So we're waiting for our check bags to come out in Manchester, England, and he pulls out this Ziploc bag filled to the brim with vomit, sealed at the top, and he just sat it down on the ground and then winked at me afterwards. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he looked at me and he goes, he, yeah. <laughs> he looked at me and he went, pss, pss. He, dude, he literally left it underneath a chair at the airport. <laughs> Just like a sack full of vomit. Like, Lycosane, that? that's what it's called, oh Lycosane. Oh my God. Allegedly, oh allegedly, allegedly, he did that. Allegedly. Oh my goodness. Joel, uh, do you have a, uh, a grossest red band story? Um, grossest red band story. Not, no, I mean, what could be, probably that, the bag of vomit is number one. Maybe him pissing on his own door in in Ireland, too. Which, by the way, was like 34 hours before the vomit bag. It was, it was not the best run for red band in that short amount of days. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Uh, my turn. Um, I once saw him swallow a boner pill at the comedy store like dry with no water. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was like getting a bunch of like spit in his mouth and then he swallowed a oh, gas yeah. station boner pill. My, That's a pro move. And then a little kid looked at him and went, my hero. <laughs> ah. Uh, oh, uh, um, uh, this one comes from uh, Tin Sin's uh, qu- <laughs> question for qu- Janice. Just leaned over and said, "That was a good night." <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude, dude, you want you want to know the grossest person in this van? It's Janice. <laughs> she probably loves them all, though. Oh you know? yeah, I, she she's a freak. If she's with, if she's with Brian, I'll, I'll be honest. In our honeymoon phase, I actually enjoyed his. Wow. You enjoyed his farts in the honeymoon phase? Wow. What cult is Red Man leading? I want to know where Janice is from now. What the? Oh, dude, that's so funny. Not, Wait, not Jan- anymore, though. Okay, so Janice, this is a great question for you. What's the grossest thing you've witnessed Brian do? Yeah. I don't think anything beats that Ziploc bag story. What but... about, what about my... <laughs> but... Wait, what? Oh, okay. Um, he does this thing where oh, he no. like peels off his nails. Like he doesn't clip his nails, he just peels it off. And then his toenails. And then he like leaves it on my phone when I'm not looking for me to pick <laughs> oh, up. Oh my I couldn't hear. What was that? He, he he takes his toenails and then he leaves it on my stuff, like my phone or something, for me to find later. I seriously am gagging. It's so disgusting. Oh, one time he gave me, he picked a bunch of his nose hairs and he handed it to me and he called it a faggot of nose hairs. What the frick? Damn. Because a faggot is a bundle of sticks, so that's why Brian called it that. It's an educated joke. (laughs) But the toenail thing's fun because uh, you can just hear her like in the other room like, grabbing her phone and going, Brian, what the fuck? It's one of my favorite things. <laughs> oh, I never even, uh, I, it never even, that's so gross to me that I never even thought about Brian having toenails before <laughs> until now. Like, it's like, my brain just protected me of thinking of what Brian's toenails must be like. <laughs> but now I know they exist and yeah, they're easy disgusting. to peel after a good shower. Oh, oh my God. God. So, <laughs> so, so that means they're never easy to peel. Oh. Dude, uh, this comes from Tin Sins. Question for William. How dare you? Good question. Wait, uh, who the fuck said that? Who the fuck <laughs> said that one? From Tin Sins. 
Here we go. Uh, here we go. There's One fun a, fact is that toenail thing I've been doing it for a long time, and I put it in my old roommate's bowl, in his bong, in the bowl, and he smoked it once, and he, he thought it was a seed, and because it was just smoking, that I, it was, and it was just a toenail. Oh that dude's dead now, right? <laughs> he it out, I was like so confused. They like, thought he OD'd what? on marijuana. They thought he was the first guy. It was, but it was just your <laughs> fucking toenail killed him. Shout out to Shane Green. <laughs> He's like, why'd you say my name, dude? Uh, we have a good line of uh, semi trucks coming up here. If you want to, uh, Try it? I mean, I think we should. This is what... We almost have no one behind us. I'm gonna do it. Let's see if we can get one here. There's a, it's a good effort. <laughs> it's a good effort. We're gonna, I'm gonna speed us up to these next ones, and uh, we'll see what happens here. Jeremiah and I, at one point, were the truck honking champions of the United States of America. <laughs> Me behind the wheel, him out the passenger side. Like right now, I think we're gonna get this one. Well, actually, this is a. This is like a tractor trailer type of setup here. No, I think you're gonna get it. This one's real. We got this guy. Come on. Oh, he's on his phone. He's on his phone and was looking at papers. That was a real homework assignment. And he's Asian. We're gonna get uh we're gonna get one of these ones up here though. That was an Asian truck driver? Look like it. An 18 Rira! <laughs> That's why it never gets old. I mean, there's something about an Asian accent. It's just <laughs> funnier than everything else. All That's right, here funny. we go. This is it. This is where champions are built. This is where they are made on the American highway. Come on. Hey! We got it. That's one. Can he start the streak two two, right two now? Three. Valencia Brothers trucking. Oh Come on, big money. Oh, he drive like a black dude. He had his hand behind his head. Oh, yeah. All right. We got a couple more. We got a couple more coming up here, and then we'll knock it out. You got you to gotta earn it. We're... We have a little bit of a streak going right here. There's nothing more exciting. Here we go. You got this guy. He's looking. Lazy, bitch. Come on. Lazy. Oh, nothing on that? Nothing on that that guy was looking and everything. Yeah, he was. If they're looking in their rearview mirror, it's usually a good sign. Here you go. We got this one. Come on. We, Come on. we got the pacing just right. Yeah, yeah. Hey! Give him a thumbs up. Yeah, that's a good one. Heck yeah. Wow, epic. I don't know, there's two more. We're, we're close enough now to where... Uh, you know that's illegal. Let me remind you that if you drink caveman coffee and you use the promo code KILTONY, you save 20%. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Heartland Honking Express. We're going a little fast, so I'm not going to lie. I take the blame if we don't get it. Let's try to, All right, try to get this one. Last one. This guy's got like fuel or something. These are usually the hardest ones to make honk because <laughs> they have to be responsible. Come on. Come on. Hey! 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 Very good. And that's how you do it in the pros. That's why we are the truck honking champions. Two hundred and forty-four miles. Wow, that was exhilarating, guys. I don't know if that translated to audio or video, but that was a lot of fun. And Tony Hinchcliffe and I still remain the truck honking champions of the world. One of those things. Uh, one of those things where when you're on the road, little things like that break up the monotonous. Uh, 
the monotony of being in a car. It's almost like having a connection and reliving your childhood. Uh, this is a question that uh, is, is good. It is at Frog Dick 27. Have you ever gotten any positive or negative attention from the Kill Bill crew? I hope Quentin or Uma watch. I have a little story about uh, this that Tony actually didn't believe uh, me when I told him because it sounds so far fetched. Uh, I saw Quentin Tarantino once uh, in person at a Thai restaurant on Sunset Boulevard called Toy. Shout out to Toy. Shout out to Toy. I love that place. So I just, ate there, uh, just ate there last week with the great Don Barris. Unbelievably great Thai food. I almost don't even want you people to know about it because I, I don't want you there. So I'm sitting uh, there on a Sunday afternoon. It is dead there. I'm um, with my wife and uh, one of the only few other people there are Quentin Tarantino. And he's with two women uh, that look the the way that they're talking and the way that they're holding conversation. They're either friends or they're some kind of production people or casting or something like that. It felt very industry kind of like a, of a hang. Uh, before my wife and I left the restaurant, I, I know how big of a, uh, a Quentin Tarantino fan that Tony is. So I'm like, I'm just going to invite him to kill Tony. I don't know if what he'll say, but I went up to his table and, uh, uh I, I said, Hey, really sorry to interrupt, uh, your guys meal, but, uh, I'd love to invite you to, uh, a show that, uh, that I'm a part of that we do every week at the comedy store. It's called kill Tony. And I think that you'd really enjoy it. And if uh, if if any of you would like to come, um, I'd gladly put you on the guest list and you guys can just come anytime you'd like on any Monday at eight o'clock. He goes, huh? Uh, where'd you say I was at again? I said, oh, it's at the comedy store. He goes, the comedy store, huh? He goes, thanks a lot for that invite. And that was that was the gist of it. But he was he he appreciated it, it seemed like. And the, the two women that he were, he was with appreciated that I was inviting them and not just being like, Mr. Tarantino, Mr. Tarantino. I was like, yeah, if you ladies would like to come or you'd like to come. And that was that was the gist of the story. But it was very direct. And, and by uh, the way, that's very ballsy that you did that, because being an L.A. guy, you know how no, that's a big no, no, interrupting somebody while they're eating. At, you know, like a dinner table or a food table. Dude, I literally, I had never seen him in person before, and I know how big of a fan Tony is, and I wanted him to show up so bad that night. I was like, this will, if he gets pissed at me, this will be worth it, like, just to, on the off chance. No, 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 of Quentin. Oh, if, if if he got upset with me for interrupting his meal, I'd just be, I'm really sorry, you know, I love your show. Literally, at Toy, there's Quentin Tarantino stuff everywhere. There's Pulp Fiction posters. So just have him sitting, like, 15 feet away. It was very, very surreal. Um, here, uh, here we go. Oh, wow. What was that? Oh. Oh, was that your phone? IG. Oh, that's coming through the mic. <laughs> My bad. All good. Uh, oh, this is funny. This is for you, David, probably, and Tony. At John G. Doe, how far would David Lucas have to go before you kick him off the show for roasting guests too hard? <laughs> if a guest was actually upset, would you feel obligated to let David go? <laughs> I don't know. No, I answer. mean, I definitely couldn't. Uh, I definitely couldn't get rid of David for that. I mean, he just ushered me off like he did the other night. Yeah, All right, guys, David Lucas. <laughs> I mean, Jesus, you were you really? It's interesting because you don't uh, you don't fuck around, man. You hit people where it hurts. Like, <laughs> dude, he went after Eddie Pepitone's teeth. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Eddie's the most like innocent bystander and yeah and but then, he tried to say i couldn't swim did he say that did you not hear him <laughs> he sort of insinuated <laughs> however i knew he went over the line immediately <laughs> it's to the point now to where like if a guest starts to say anything about david that's when i'm like no <laughs> <laughs> because yeah i mean i would never i would i just wouldn't make fun of eddie's teeth if we hung out for like 10 years, just the two of us, I probably would never make fun of his teeth. <laughs> Meanwhile, he called him Jurassic Park. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> da, da, da. 
But at the same time, it's pretty, it's, I think it's a cool element, new element to the show because I don't ever make fun of the guests. So I get to sort of be like the good cop in that moment. Right, like, oh right. no, this is what he does to everybody. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Like I, there's. He's a loose cannon. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> But man, that that Michael Bisping shit was epic. I don't know if the fan like I don't think somebody made a meme out of that. They put Debo, Michael Bisping, and oh then a picture god. of me. Oh my god, <laughs> dude! I, for people who weren't there, they don't realize the degree and severity of the anger that was coming off of Bisping. <laughs> I was, I mean, Tony, you're literally right next to him. I'm I'm sitting on where the band sits, just seven feet away, and I'm like, this dude might get up and slap David Lucas. <laughs> I was completely ready to have my right hand go behind Bisping's shoulder and bring him back down. That's, I mean, I was ready to pull him back down, even though he didn't stand up. <laughs> I was ready to literally, like, I was just going to hold on to him like a kid, like, holds on to a, like. <laughs> what if he wore you like a backpack, though, and he kept. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he, I, he turned into a UFC, like, yeah. pre-fight show. Yeah. He was like, dance, boy, dance. I was like, what yeah, the fuck? Oh, when he said that, I was like, I was like, David, chill out, man. I wanted <laughs> you to go more. That's why I was trying to I wanted more. Oh, dude. I can't go it. it was crazy. That was like it. I told Tony, he got one eye. He's not beating me. Oh, he, he that's just turn that's, him around on his chair. That's just, you wouldn't know. I mean, that's just insanity. He would beat the living <laughs> shit out of him. <laughs> oh, dude. It would be insane. <laughs> Nah, he probably would, but I could take ass with him. Uh, I would have had a nice little civil suit. <laughs> by the way, you get your ass beat by Mike Bisping on a live podcast, you're a legend. I'm so. viral. Yeah. That showed up with five, 10 million. Five days later, and no one can even see Bri it. Brian's a different kind of viral. <laughs> and no one could even see the bruises on you, David, so it's a win-win. Oh, win. shit. Almost, oh, no, no. What's my name? Oh, no, no. <laughs> What's my name? <laughs> <laughs> uh this this is funny this scary birdman says tell brian to stop playing the cam girl jingle noise i can't play the podcast on my work pc with that noise <laughs> going out over the speakers i love i love how that's the thing well, the, like, well then the comment below says bones jones as he goes lol but rape and asshole jokes are fine for work <laughs> it's like for whatever reason the boss just hears a sh yeah. and there's like hey it what just, are you watching in there that just sounds like a, a text that it sounds like a text message. Also, anybody also anybody who knows what that is at the boss level, yeah. then you'd be like, how do you know what that is? Yeah, then you could bro out with that guy. <laughs> do you like Jeremiah Wonders and you're enjoying this roadcast with the Kill Tony cast? Well, come see me headline at a stand up comedy club near you. Huntington Beach, San Diego, St. Louis, Kansas City and Chicago all within the next couple months. Get tickets at JeremiahWatkins.com. Now let's get back into this amazing roadcast with the entire cast of Kill Tony. This is a Jeremiah Wonders roadcast. Rolling right back to you. Well, okay, this one comes from uh, at Christian H. Buck. What is everyone's favorite memory of Kill Tony Mania 2018? Mine is Mikey McKernan on the panel crushing. Yeah, that's good. Thank you for that question. You just reminded me of something very important. Let's ask someone else first. Uh, uh, okay. Favorite um, Kill Tony Mania memory? Yeah, do you have a... Do you have yeah, a I, I would say just being in the green room with everybody, like in between those shows, having pizza, and I don't know, it was fun. There was such a like almost um, rock and roll, like concert green room vibe to it. Uh, Chris, what about you, uh, buddy? Because uh, are you going to go on like some of the, the more like regional uh, shows with us, like to Vegas and to Arizona and like San Fran. So uh, what, what are you uh, usually feeling when we go on the road versus, you know, the vibe at the comedy store? Oh, yeah, the road, it's, it's definitely uh, it's, a, it's a it's a big difference in the in the feeling and then just also trying to get everything ready for sure and like packed up for however many shows because um the show's gotten so big now that we, we're, we're doing two three shows at a time when we go on the road so yeah just packing for everything is quite a bit uh big difference uh do you have a favorite memory from uh uh kill tony mania just, last year yeah just being in the van last year was actually uh really fun because it was like 12 or 14 of us just all crammed in but uh like joel was saying it was definitely like a 
like a tour kind of rock star experience. It's really fun. Heck yeah. Uh, this one comes from at Dan underscore Pena. Uh, do you ever think about some way of getting rid of the I don't know I was called I have nothing to say people maybe announce it at the start of the show that if this is them and they get called just put their hand up and say next name. Huh. That's now, it happens so rarely nowadays that I think that uh, that I think that it says a lot. It's very telling about the person that got pulled out of the bucket if they say that clearly they don't listen to the show a lot. Clearly they're new overall. Clearly, uh, they're just not extremely professional. So it's not really, it used to be one of those things that I would really even acknowledge, but now I just, I don't, I don't even, I don't, I almost, I just go to my next question or what I want to know about the person rather than delving into that. We've already covered that. I try to keep every episode as refillable as possible and just yelling at people without it being funny is a waste of, a waste of everyone's time now and the momentum of the comedy show that we're doing. This one comes from, uh, at it's me, Bob. Uh, what next step or steps do you want to see kill Tony take? Obviously it's doing fantastic, but do you see yourself starting to find it stale and needing to take it to a new level? I don't feel like it feels stale at all. I feel like it keeps evolving and growing. Uh, but I think that the, the next steps is more of an interesting question than making it feel, stale like what we're i guess what we're trying to do i think we're kind of already it's naturally uh kind of evolving like with the theaters that we're starting to do as as if you look at the trajectory of some of our peers like the the birds and toms out there who (laughs) (laughs) oh he did the kitty he did the kitty cat he, he did the he did the kill Tony kitty cat when I I did a thirty second explanation. That is fucking funny. L- look at the look at the tape on that. Uh, I was talking for thirty seconds. Uh, on uh, you see the what our peers are doing. It's just a natural <laughs> evolution. <laughs> Oh my god. I feel what Michael Bisping is feeling right now. <laughs> uh, do you have any uh thoughts on that, Brian? Uh I don't remember. Oh. You know I what do. I do? It's a it's a dumb question. There's nothing what the steps to take? I don't think it's necessarily a dumb question. Yeah, yeah, it's a dumb question because we already do it. If we told you every single thing that's you know, that that I have envisioned for a year out or two years out what would be the fun in that everything's happening organically the shows are we talking about the show growing like next steps it's already happening we have david david how long you been doing stand-up uh about six years religiously six years religiously he's you know been featured heavily on roast shows and this and that we're talking about six years big time in the game and You know, he's a new regular and William's been doing it 12 years and he's the most recent regular. Whereas when we started, it was literally the regulars. It was their first times doing stand up. It was, you know, this and that. And another part of the natural evolution of the show is uh, more veteran style comedians doing it. On Monday's episode, we had a lady. uh, uh, I can't remember her name. Aaliyah Mansfield. Yes. Very, very funny. Aaliyah Mansfield, who's been doing it 12 or 15 years or something like that. And we had another person on the show on Monday that's been doing it 12 years. And I feel like that's a big part of the evolution of the show, too, is on its home shows in L.A., having extremely, like, veteran unknown comedians that can really kill um, signing up and doing the show, whereas originally... Uh, there wasn't really that opportunity because it wasn't such a massive, well-known show with such a great fan base. So now it's become an opportunity for people that are extremely talented to come on and sort of showcase themselves and their stories and their sense of humors and uh, not just their 60 seconds and get known by people that actually like comedy. So that happens all organically. And and, open up hella doors. Yep. I got a fucking pilot from Kill Tony. Booyah! I'm the pilot. (laughs) <laughs> we're all going down uh yeah i uh i think that that's something that's definitely interesting that i've noticed over uh 
over the years is that uh, more and more experienced comics are starting to sign up for the show. And we're also performing all around the globe now. I mean, we're going to Australia next week. And so, like, everyone on that show is going to sound Australian because we're going to be in fucking Australia. So, you know. Yeah, like you said, the, the veteran comics. With that, wasn't that crazy that one guy we had, was it this week or last week? He had his own Comedy Central special. Oh, <laughs> he had a half hour. I found Comedy out Central. about that. <laughs> and I, I, I almost, that, and I almost guarantee you that he probably, probably got a bigger boost from one appearance on this show then is half hour filled with commercials on comedy central probably put up friday at midnight yeah he did the kevin hart shit that's dope ah uh, ah uh, i see the city you know where they go to cities and get the comedians and give them a half hour uh, there's a lot of people in this car so let's keep the uh, kevin hart talk down you know what i mean i don't want to uh bring any bad karma <laughs> Yo. <laughs> right. Uh Joel, are you uh, excited to go to uh, Australia, buddy? Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> of course. Wow. wow. No, I no, I, you know what it is? I try not to think of it as this huge thing cuz I will I'll freak myself out. It's a real, it's a real thing. So I just, oh. I'm just like, yeah, that's fine. I'll pack my bags. I'll be, I'll get, I'll get there when I'm supposed to. And uh, let me ask you this: Joel has a lot of travel anxiety. Like you had an all-out panic attack before we went to Europe, right? Yeah. So what is it about long trips like that that gets in your head? Like, is it the travel? Is it the pressure of having to do a good show? Uh, I'd say it's everything. Yeah, it's everything. It starts swirling and then it fucking then it just starts to like um, then I start to feel weird because of that. And then I'm like, oh, no, no, I'm this I can't go, blah, blah, blah. A big thing that did help with that was you guys when you guys got sick in Europe. Uh, that was like worse, maybe worst case scenario. And so being able to make it through that now, a lot of these other things aren't like a really a big deal anymore. I, I'm definitely doing better with it. I, yeah. I just try not to like blow it up in my head before it happens. Um, whatever. I'll be it'll be great. Once I'm there, I'm fantastic. Or, it's like, an interesting know. subject because I think a lot of people deal with anxiety a lot more than uh, they talk about. And um, and uh, yeah, Joel actually. You went to the hospital before we went to Europe, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I used to have anxiety really bad. I, I checked myself in the hospital three times. I called the police on myself. Oh, once. my God. <laughs> but it just it just went away, like, around age 40. It just I started eating totally toenails. Stopped. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. definitely an experience thing. The more times you fly and the more times you get out there, the easier it gets, just like anything. Yeah, yeah. our summer tour really helped, too, because we were on the move so much. Like, I got my packing down to a science. I got the whole... I started getting in the swing of it all. But, um, yeah, I'm fine. I have a blast when I'm there and stuff. It all... that That is the... The cure is just going. I mean, there is a feeling of dread that never ends right before going on the road. Like, no matter what. Like, yeah. oh, are my, is my dog going to be OK? Is yeah. this OK? You know what I mean? Like, did I leave a fucking I'm getting sick or whatever I leave the that fuck? on like that just never ends. There's always a I never feel great the day before heading on the road. Never great. Maybe 80 percent at best. Yeah, I agree. For me, the only anxiety that comes uh, before leaving is the packing because uh, just mainly just with Kill Tony, because I'm always f wanting to make sure I'm not forgetting a piece of the, of a costume or a wig or something like that. Uh, Cause it happened one time where I forgot a wig and it was just like the worst feeling like, like there wasn't time for me to go home. Uh, and yeah, that's the only time I get like worked up is like, because we have to pack. So Joel and I have to pack so much and I still Joel's packing is really impressive like how how tight he can uh get stuff william how you doing back there he's man? talking about when we're alone in the hotel room packing it was a packing it was a butt fucking joke all right 
William back used to having uh, to squeeze his whole family into a small right. car. <laughs> <laughs> they have a, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but Joel's family travels in a Nissan Juke. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey. Ryan J. Ebel, do you uh, do you ever deal with any anxiety or uh, or uh, or or panic since we're on the the, the, the topic? Uh, yeah, I actually pretty badly most of the time. Oh, really? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best response. Oh what uh, what what would you say is the origin or the the fuel of that? I have no idea. It's set in. Weirdly enough, years ago, I went on a road trip with some friends, and after the weekend was over, I got home, and for some reason, I had a mild freak out. I have no idea why. Like, was fine all during the trip. Got home, lost my mind, and for years after that, like, social anxiety, worried about doing stuff. Like, you're like, it, it, it's just sort of like a through line, and I just then learned how to manage it. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's definitely how it happened. It did that, that first one's a doozy. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that first one. It was crazy. I, uh, it was my first time ever smoking pot by myself or at my house. And I did it both at the same time. My mom, who very rarely left the house when I was a kid, went out to like dinner with my aunt or something like that. And I had a uh, pot in the back of my Teddy rock spin. Like, uh, oh, I still have mine. It was like 13 <laughs> or 14 or something. Did it have a zipper on it? Yeah. It had a little zipper on the back with a battery pack. And I took a little bit of pot and I put it on a, uh, I squeezed down like a Coca-Cola can, put some holes in it. I ended up cause I put like a bowl on there cause I was just used to smoking bowls with my friends. And then I'm like, oh, I'm by myself, but I might as well not waste the pot. So I smoked the whole bowl to myself and then boom, I spend the next three or four hours just pacing, sweating, crying. I couldn't stop walking. I just kept pacing around in circles. I've only had one panic attack in my life and it was during the weight gain challenge because uh, I've, never, I've never experienced it before. I was on stage at the comedy store and one of the things that was really the the only health thing that was wrong with that uh, the the weight gaining is I kept constantly having sugar crashes. I would literally get so high off the sugar that I was eating, and then and like an hour later, I would start to crash and feel terrible because my body was so in flux with all the eating that I was doing. So I bombed on stage at the comedy store in the OR late night. There's four people in there i'm bombing so bad like getting nothing where i my heart starts racing i literally went out to my car and i started like breathing in and out like really hard and i started crying like in my car and uh that was the only time in my life i've had a panic attack and it was directly related i know for a fact from the sugar that was going so up and down like in my body wow you know your sugar levels are still like that right Somewhat, yes. It's it's definitely an issue. Uh, Tony makes fun of me because uh, after I eat a meal, I'll get a lot of energy, and then uh, an hour later, no. After you eat a meal, you get how Red Band and I get after four drinks. Like it's like you get like happy and silly and goofy, and you'll just be having fun, and you'll do silly voices and impressions, and and then it, he crashes and just yeah. mumbles to himself with his eyes open. And he Hey, that was on the back. That was on the way back from La Jolla. Uh, Red Band saw me at maybe one of the worst he's ever seen me uh, when I crashed after McDonald's. Yeah, which was the best. It McDonald's was the best McDonald's the I've ever had in my life. Like they seriously, it was really that. good. Yeah, uh, yeah. Red Band and I found a McDonald's that may not even exist. Maybe it was a dream. <laughs> yeah, it was a dream. It was. It was that good. Uh, I want to do this segment. It's a. Uh, it's a. It's definitely uh, a segment that's a favorite of, uh, of Brian's and Tony's in the car when we do it. It's called Wait. Sax Talk. Uh -huh. uh, sax Talk. Now, uh... <laughs> Boo! Boo! All right, so since we have Ryan J. Ebelt in the car, uh, oh yeah, boy, I, I would love... You know what? 
I think we should uh, plug our dates before this part of the show. Uh, <laughs> we're doing Kill Tony's just announced. Yeah, that's fine. Columbus, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, D.C. just added another show. And we're going back to New York City at the Gramercy Theater. If this isn't going up before Australia, right? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I think it'll be, uh, uh, who knows? It'll be out in a few weeks from now. Columbus, Cleveland, D.C., Pittsburgh, New York, and Calgary, Canada have been announced. Heck yeah. When Calgary's at like the end of January, right? Something like that. Yeah. And, uh, don't, and don't forget for the best tech reviews, check out JTech, where Jeremiah reviews tech technology. Whoa. <laughs> what? That's like a deep I lived reference. What did, where, where did you, uh, where did you have hey, that? I'm a JTech fan. What, dude? <laughs> Whoa. What did, Brian has my movie. I lived up. It's a, this independent suspense thriller that I starred in. Tech. That's I so. It. That's so funny, dude. Oh yeah. That's oh funny. yeah. You have all the. Oh, is yeah, that a I Google images? Sex scene saved on that. Oh my goodness. There is a sex scene in it. Um, angry Jeremiah. Right uh, for um, this will be out. Uh, yeah, here in a little bit. November. Uh, at the end of November, I'll be uh, headlining in St. Louis at Helium Comedy Club, and then uh, December sixth, uh, uh, San Diego with the Kiltoni Band and William Montgomery. William, you excited for that show? I'm pumped. <laughs> and then uh, December nineteenth through twenty first, I'll be headlining in Kansas City. Uh, so yeah, let's get into Sax Talk now. Uh, Ryan, would you be willing to share a story of a, uh, a sexual encounter where I play some sax along with it? Sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for this. Um, whenever you are ready, my friend, I will follow you along. Oh, there's no, there's no prompting. No. It could be a masturbation. Oh, you mean like uh oh it can yeah, it can no, be as good ones it, those, it can be as innocent or as graphic as you'd like. I don't know. You may want to skip me. I can't think of anything good off the top of my head. Any any sex stories? No. This is how we find out Ryan's a virgin and you play careless whisper to end the episode. Yeah, no, no it, it, it <laughs> No, no, not not a virgin, but it's all pretty pedestrian, and I'm trying to think of anything even. What's the weirdest fun? place you've ever uh, jerked off? Well, I'm going to say uh, probably the, the, one of the first times man. out of the house at, at grandma and grandpa's house. Hey, where's that saxophone, <laughs> dude? Let's do this shit. <laughs> oh my God, it's the worst. Uh, so did you do it like in bed with them, like uh, Willy Wonka style? <laughs> Head to feet? <laughs> Well, see, what was great, my grandfather basically had a Playboy subscription since the 70s. And for years, we knew where they were, like me and my sister, like we knew where he kept them stashed. But, you know, it was and, and he was, a, you know, he was a nice guy. He wasn't like, you know, particularly strict or anything, but it was always kind of verboten. Like, you know, you know, you know, you don't get into grandpa stuff, basically. <laughs> But into grandpa's stuff, you would eventually yeah, well, get. You know, but once uh, once the hormones started taking over, it's like it was a lot easier to make that transition. And it was in this chest next to his chair, like his his big like comfy chair in the living room. Ooh, grandpa's dirty chair. Yeah. And so you go in and there were some like popular mechanics and like that sort of like magazines on top. Yeah, basically the book covers for the good stuff. Uh-huh. But the real trick was, is it's like, you know, the way they were arranged, because of course when you're a kid, it's like you don't want to get caught. So I end up going into full, you know, Mission Impossible mode, trying to memorize exactly the order and how all of these magazines are organized in this stack. But the mission was possible, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, once, once I fished, fished the first okay. one out. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that thing is so fucking loud. I think you could go at like half power and it'll still carry on the podcast. I almost guarantee it. 
Okay, Ryan J. Uh huh. So you're you're memorizing where the auto mechanics are and where the playboys are. Oh yeah, and if you know if this one's slightly tilted compared to the angle of the next one underneath it, and then trying to like slide one out, you know, like like Indiana Jones here. It's like, can I get one out without disturbing the entire stack and blowing anything else over? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Indiana moans over here. Uh-huh. And then what happened? Well, and then, of course, like the first thing, it's like you flip through it. And, in, uh, you know, even at that age, it's like you're already a connoisseur. It's like even though you haven't seen or done anything, <laughs> you're already looking through it going like, uh, not good yeah, enough. No, for this me. girl like uh, Miss Miss May. Definitely. Definitely not. Not right. not on my. Uh, yeah. Let's, let's see what April has. <laughs> so, uh-huh. yeah. And then next thing you know, you spit on your hand and you just jerk and you accidentally come all over the auto mechanics magazine. And oh, no, uh, that was one where I, I did have a, you know, like suck in moment, like realizing like I, I wasn't paying attention to uh, to. Uh, so, yeah. But, no. but but was smart enough to leave the magazine there. And when I went to finish, uh, you know, a pure imagination based on what whoever I did end up liking. That's right. So what car from auto mechanics did you end up jerking off to? Oh, well, we were discussing a uh, 71 uh, Dodge Challenger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> an abrupt ending to uh, Zach's talk. Uh, so you jerked off uh, to one of your grandpa's magazines? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Brian's got his sunglasses on, which means he's up to no good. What are you doing back there, Brian? You tell me when this thing's over so I can throw this Sour Patch Kid and hit it right at the camera lens so it'd be a cool ending. Uh, Yeah, I don't know about like that. Oh, <laughs> dude, that was... Okay, this water is still open up here. It still doesn't have a, a cap, dude. <laughs> oh, I hit the water. You hit the water bottle. I had no cap on. How it are my so shorts so even wet right now? <laughs> oh my God. I'm sorry, dude. You're stupid. I did like hearing Janice say, "You stupid! Yeah. <laughs> you stupid!" I didn't, I, I didn't know Janice was Latino. You stupid! You stupid! Hey Brian, why are you so stupid, eh? It's like an episode of White Man Can't Jump if the white man actually could not jump. <laughs> Brian, why did you put all that money into basketball? You can't play. <laughs> uh. Well, cool, guys. Um, thank you for listening to the roadcast. I will encourage you guys to keep sending in. Uh, oh, my g- dude, this is incredible. Um, since we have Ryan J in the car with us, he did a kill Tony. Roadcast drawing. Look at this thing. This is so freaking cool. There's so many details in here. Uh, for you audio listeners, there's Slimer, there's a bison, there's music notes, there's spilled water, there, uh, there's <laughs> William Montgomery's uh, nanny's teeth, <laughs> there's a semi for the truck honking, there's a gas mask for the fart talk, uh, wow, there's a Teddy Ruxpin here, there is a, um, a how, how dare you, there's a uh, fries for the, uh, the, the different burger talk that we were talking about, uh, Sacramento, LA. There's a sheep uh, that Janice mentioned. Uh, a whoopee cushion. Wow, man, this is. Uh, check out Ryan J. Ebel's prints. Uh, uh, RyanJEbel.com or ShopSquad.tv. Uh, links to all the different uh, merch and stuff. There's a new Kill Tony shirt that's out. And the new book is available now on Amazon. Right by the time yeah. this comes out, yeah. And uh, we still have a, a warehouse full of calendars, guys. Uh, <laughs> The, <sighs> the warehouse is built uh, built of calendars there's and a, um, there's calendars inside. There's a lot of calendars left, guys. Uh, so if you uh, would like to do that, you can get that at jeremiahwatkins.com. Uh, there's also a link at shopsquad.tv. Um, I'll, I'll encourage you guys to keep sending out your kindness challenge letters. Haven't uh, read one on the show here in a little bit. Uh, 
I will say that I uh, I donated to the Dare program recently as uh, <laughs> as my kindness challenge. Uh, what uh, you do anything uh, recently, uh, Tony? You the qualify? Yeah, no, I don't do any of that faggy shit to overcompensate <laughs> for uh, you know only caring about myself. I just really only take care of my friends and uh, do uh, nice things for the people closest to me, not a bunch of strangers or organizations run by CEOs that take all the money and keep them. Well, it can, it can be for, uh, it can actually be for somebody that you know. Uh, it can be little or big. It doesn't have to be for a stranger. So uh, you're you're actually, you're killing it, the kindness challenge. Uh, and you're doing a great job driving and being our captain on this trip, my friend. That's right. The kindness never ends with me always in the middle of it heck yeah we love you guys thank you for listening or watching this roadcast and uh we will see you in a city near you with kill tony and uh thanks for supporting jeremiah wonders bye we love you okay brian <laughs> if you spill oh you did it you did it you did it congratulations you hit the camera